Good morning, sir. So you can see the mess here. Uh, yesterday I came and I stripped all the lumber on the inside of the footing. So I don't need to do the outside for now uh, because I'll be building ICF wall uh, on the footing and this uh, inside this area, whole area will be filled with gravel and compacted. Uh, what I have left is the removing these uh, forms for uh, the, the one that holds the post, the columns. So I, I make these videos, uh, one is to keep records of my journey in building this house. Uh, is a long uh, process, probably going to take me more than a year. Um, and uh, I thought about a few things yesterday and I want to share a few mistakes that I could make along the way. So one of the mistakes that I made that I'm having trouble today is that when I uh, decided to go, I didn't need to do this keyway uh, because the rebar is good enough, uh, but I wanted to do both anyways. So I decided to put this uh, 2x4 inside here and uh, my cousin's friend who, who I love, who helped me a lot in this project, uh, uh, my cousin and uh, him uh, pretty much built this footing here. Uh, he made argument with me that you can kick this 2x4 out, but, and, but the concrete guy this time was right. He said this 2x4 is not coming out once it's stuck there so uh, the concrete guy was right it's not coming out uh, because as you can see here I don't know if you can see it uh, it's really 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 sandwiched inside of the concrete now I thought about machines to uh, cut through here cut through this line and free up this uh, 2x4 but uh, I couldn't find any machine. Even I went to a rental company, I couldn't find any machine. So uh, I don't know. So I'm gonna get a blade, uh, concrete cutting blades, and I will try. And if I do, and I will, uh, I will show you. So another thing is that when concrete, I learned myself today, when concrete are poured, they're not gonna bond to uh, a bed, uh, a bedrock or any kind of rock. So the way I knew is that this concrete that you see here is actually a leftover that was that was uh, pulled uh, on a bedrock and you can see here i can lift it it's not stuck to the it's not stuck to the uh bedrock another thing is that uh, i wasn't uh, certain on my concrete calculation i didn't want to order a truck full of concrete uh, that it would be extra so i ordered two trucks but I knew it would take me more than two trucks, uh, two and a half or something like that. So I told the guy to hold on making the, the third truck until I know my exact number. But what does that lead to was there was a half an hour of wait and the concrete almost cured and you can see the second layer here. So in order to have, um, I mean, it's not going to be a problem. I mean, the, the, the concrete uh, at the bottom was wet when we, in, we poured the, the other concrete, but it was not as wet as the fresh one. So it made this, uh, it, it didn't bond very well, but it's not, it's not gonna be a problem. But this would give you an idea when you're ordering concrete, if you wanna have a monopore, do your calculations really good, how much concrete you need and tell them. And if you have a uh, two meters extra, in my area is like 200 Canadian dollars. I mean, uh, 200 Canadian dollars, uh, you know, if you think of the whole project, it's not bad. So that's one of the mistake I made, not calculating my concrete really well. And, and uh, this is gonna, you know, cost me a little more money to remove. Still not bad. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I didn't plan to make uh, I, I said to myself, uh, I, I would never make a footing uh, because I knew it was going to be a lot of problem. But the other stuff, I know I'm not going to make. I shouldn't say I'm not going to make a mistake, but it was less likely that I would make a mistake on the other stuff because the footing, I don't know anything about footing. But even I didn't know, I got into it and I made it happen. So, there you go. Now, 
another thing I want to show you oh you can see this uh, puddle of water I found a bunch of a bunch of uh, every time I clear it there's more uh, rain will come in and it will collect but the good thing is we'll just collect here uh, it finds uh, water finds out of this way so it tells me a lot that my land is not bad I mean it didn't collect in that corner there that's the lowest point but it didn't collect water so I feel good about that and so I want to show you about the grounding and bonding that I talked about uh, in my last video if you watch my last video I did a video on uh, grounding and bonding and I said this cable here this grounding cable will come out and this is where it will come out and it will come out of here like this is like a four foot uh, it will stick out here into my utility room so the guy came the uh, Ontario Electric Authority inspector and he admired my work and said amazing uh, and then uh, he gave me a little, a little couple of tips and he passed me right away the same way uh, for the rebar installation the city inspector was impressed by my work because I went crazy with the rebar Yamano rebar I put more than what the engineer called for because I can uh, because this is my house and also I mean uh, it wouldn't hurt my budget it's not like I'm hiring somebody to do it for me uh, the, the the people who came and caught uh, gave me a quote and for building this uh, uh, footing uh, they were asking uh, for a lot of money I don't want to mention but also that they were planning to use less rebar and less concrete one of them even mentioned that you probably want to use four inch of concrete on that corner as minimum as required so you know but when it's your house you know what I mean you want to make it really nice I mean, I could leave uh, this uh, lumber inside of this uh, two by four, inside of the concrete. Uh, I don't think it's gonna hurt the whole thing. But my plan was to have that in there, you know, to the keyway. So I'm gonna get it removed. So it's what uh, my house so far looks like. I know my iPhone is not a great, is not taking a great picture. Uh, if you notice my driveway. Over there, it looks like uh, from this video, it looks like almost uh, straight, but that drop there is 17% grade. The maximum you can go is 21, so really, really steep. So that driveway also requires another project to have a radiant heating, uh, radiant heating system. Otherwise, I will never be able to drive in the winter time. So that's another project next year, which I will have it in a video. So I decided to call this uh, project the entire house building and instead of calling it uh, this little house on a cliff which is on a cliff because if you can see this is a big bedrock maybe one day I'll show you a Google uh, Earth uh, you know picture of uh, of my site but it's a big bedrock and in the back Sorry, the sun. In the back here, it really, really, you can see the big drop there. I don't know if you can see it on this video. And I'm standing on the far left side of the corner. You can see that in the backyard, there's a drop. Okay, this is all the trees. I think more than 14 feet. So uh, you can see this also a rock and it also drops and pretty much sitting on the edge of, of a big huge rock. So that's why I decided to call it this little house, this, this little house on the bedrock. Uh, but maybe I should change it uh, to this amateur house on the bedrock or this sloppy house on the bedrock. I mean, by no means it's going to be sloppy but it's been built by an amateur person. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anybody can build a house. Uh, so thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my video. I'm gonna be adding lots of video to my channel. Uh, if you subscribe, you're gonna be helping me. 
uh, and uh, making more projects and taking uh, more risks. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.